generation that let success so high. I will achieve. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. Last week, in an interview with Business Standard Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said that the government was on track with its bank privatization plan. However, she also admitted that it wasn't clear if the government would dilute the entire stake or let go of the majority stake first. In another move that will bring cheer to the markets, RBI cleared the merger of HDFC and HDFC Bank on Monday subject to certain conditions. Good morning, my name is Ishan Gera and you're watching the Business Standard Banking Show. In today's episode, we'll cover the vital banking developments of the week. We have an interview lined up with Prashant Kumar, MD and CEO of Yes Bank. Our Banking for You section explains what mark-to-market losses are and our banking expert Tamal Bandhupadhyay explains why banks may register losses after they just experienced their best year in terms of growth in net profits. But first, here are the significant developments of the week. The inflation reading may not bring much cheer to market watchers, but RBI's financial stability report released last week would help bring some relief. RBI's FSR report said that scheduled commercial banks' gross non-performing assets GNPAs, declined to a six-year low of 5.9% in March 2022, compared to 7.4% in March 2021. Under the baseline scenario, the GNPAs are expected to fall to 5.3% next year. However, a severe stress scenario can push them towards 8.3%. The central bank warned of significant spillovers from global conditions and was not too optimistic about technology. Cautioning about fintech and big tech players, RBI said that the technologies could expose the banking system to new risks. The risks for foreign banks in India are innumerable, but that hasn't stopped them from taking bets in one of Asia's largest markets. A year after Citibank announced that it would exit its onshore private banking operation in India, HSBC is attempting to re-enter the Indian market. Although the bank exited its private banking business in the country in 2015, its CEO told Reuters that it would try to relaunch its operation within a year to cater to high net worth individuals. The bank's profits before tax rose 9% last year. It had also agreed to buy the mutual fund arm of LNT Finance Holdings for $425 million. It's not just the NPAs that are coming down, the number of frauds in the country have also declined. Frauds worth over 100 crore rupees declined from 1.05 trillion in 2020-21 to 0.41 trillion in 2021-22. The number of cases in this category declined from 265 to 118. While the cases halved for public sector banks, the decline for private sector banks was even starker, with cases reducing from 98 2020-21 to 38 in 2021-22. Earlier this year, the State Bank of India reported one of the biggest bank frauds totaling 22,842 crore rupees by ABG shipyards. Although credit growth has picked up, it's coming with challenges. The gap between credit growth and deposit growth hit a three-year high. If the gap persists, it hampers the ability of banks to make new loans. The preference for cash indicates a dangerous trend as inflation is causing concern. After turbulent years where SBI had to steady the ship by taking in a 30% stake in the bank, Yes Bank has come a long way, registering a profit in 2021-22. Our banking editor, Manojit Saha, discussed with Prashant Kumar, CEO and MD, Yes Bank, the bank's future trajectory. Let's listen in. Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. Private sector lender Yes Bank got a fresh lease of life two years back, with State Bank of India picking up a stake of 30%. A new board was formed along with a new CEO. In the financial year 2022, the bank reported profit for the full year after incurring loss for the past two years. To discuss the future roadmap of the bank, we have Prashant Kumar, MD and CEO of Yes Bank. Mr. Kumar, welcome to the show. And uh, congratulations for being appointed for another three years, which is of course subject to approvals. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So let me start uh, with asking you, after you took charge in your office yes bank in, in March uh, 2022, last two years you have focused steadying the bank. There has been an improvement in several parameters like CASA ratio, margins, credit cost, and asset quality. A new board will also be formed after replacing some of the existing board members. What is the roadmap now going ahead? So, Madhuji, like what you have rightly said, uh, that 
very first year was in terms of studying the sheep because the after march 2020 uh, along with the like bank was put under moratorium in the initially march 2020 and then subsequent because of the covid impact also i think we need to make a lot of changes in our own internal processes governance risk management and after doing all those part i think the fi 22 was something where we have grown into the business and also in terms of making the profit so fi 22 uh, was the first full year profit and it was more than 1000 crores so i think last year we have seen the growth in the business both in terms of deposit loans and also in terms of making the good recoveries from our distress asset pool uh, after achieving those objectives now we are coming out from the reconstruction scheme with the formation of alternate board uh, on the 15th of july uh, and uh, this year this financial year and uh, good years going ahead the focus is more in terms of business growth and also in terms of improving the profitability A- and i would be saying the contributor for this uh, would be a loan growth Uh, of around say 15% minimum 15% loan growth uh, which would be largely contributed from the retail and msme and the medium en- enterprise to the extent of around say 25% and on the large corporate on the uh, say around 10% A- and this loan growth uh, would be supported by a deposit growth uh, where the casa mix is something which we are focusing because that would also give us lot of advantage on the funding the cost of the funding which we would like to pass on to our customers on the lending side correct so so i think this is something which we are doing last two years we have been able to make a recovery in the resolution uh, of around 13000 crores from our stress asset pool and i think this journey would continue in the current financial year also Uh, where we we are absolutely sure in terms of making a recovery and the resolution of at least five thousand crores. Okay, so so this is this is I think what we are planning. But I think the most important part uh, is uh, we are very really strong on our digital capabilities. Uh, in fact, today every third digital transaction of the country is being supported by Yes Bank infrastructure. I see. okay so so it means basically it's almost every month uh, we are handling almost 2.5 billion transactions digital transaction every month uh, which translates uh, into almost 4.5 trillion indian rupees every month uh, now coming to another important aspect which is asset quality uh, while asset quality has improved the stock of gross npr remains large about 14% reducing that number would also depend on how quickly you set up the proposed asset reconstruction company which seems got delayed earlier i think you said that by june the transfer could happen but it did not can you give us some can you throw some light when you plan to set up the arc uh, and uh, and and the transfer of assets no i i would agree with you in terms of Uh, that people feel there have been delays in setting up this arc uh, but at the same time i would request uh, each one of you in terms of appreciating that this would be a very very large transaction where is stress asset pool of something around 50000 crores the second part this is this is the first time this is the first time in the industry so this is also something which is unknown for us okay and when you are heavy entering into a partnership uh, with the foreign players definitely the partners would also like to ensure that their interests remain protected over a period of time correct so i think for both the partners this is something new uh, we are trying to resolve all the issues and and today like we are in situation like on day one you can't anticipate all kind of issues which can come up okay so every day when you move forward you always find some issues which you need to resolve and that is exactly what we are trying to do uh it is taking some time but we are quite hopeful and confident uh, that we would be able to do this part uh, very soon right sir uh, uh, the earlier plan was to sell 50000 crore of npa that's still on 
that that is still on and we would be actually uh, trying to dispose of all the stress asset pool both on the wholesale banking and also on the retail side i was coming to that so you will be become a zero npa bank is that correct uh, yeah yeah exactly uh, coming to ros the bank has guided for a uh, 75 bips ros for fy23 according to some analysts the projections appears optimistic uh, because uh, you know to achieve such a target you growth needs to pick up how confident are you on the growth front and reaching the roa targets no no i think the roa guidance which we have given for 75 basis point we are absolutely confident in terms of achieving that rather we would be inching towards uh, our target of 1% roa in the current financial year itself let's see if we are not able to do it definitely next year it would be done but 75 basis point is something which we are fully confident and why we are confident uh, last year also during the difficult times uh, we were able to grow 27% on the retail and msme there has been a growth of more than 30% on the medium enterprise but overall loan growth was around 9% and the reason was that on the large corporate there were two things which happened one thing is that all the large corporate last financial year they were also deal leveraging their balance sheet and repaying to the banks the second thing as a bank also our strategy was also to reduce our large exposures okay so it was more of a debulking and de-risking some of the portfolio which has been done now but if you see the disbursement last year we have disbursed almost 70000 crores of loan Okay. So, so the current year, that kind of disbursement, that kind of growth uh, would definitely happen, and it would result into a loan growth of at least fifteen percent. We are fully confident. And, and similarly, on the reducing the cost, funding cost, uh, we are continuously improving our casa ratio. Uh, this bank used to open, even in the best of the times, say every month something around thirty-five thousand new saving bank accounts. Okay. today i think this would be the fifth month where we are continuously opening more than 1 lakh saving bank accounts every month every so month means, every month so we are adding actually if you see more than 1 lakh new customer to us who also give us lot of opportunities in terms of reducing the funding cost but also do a cross sell of our loan products and the fee based products i mean so far as credit uptick is concerned have you seen the healthy uh, credit pick up in the first quarter of the current financial year so so i think fortunately uh, though the interest rate has gone up twice uh, yes. in this quarter but i think we are not seeing any negative impact on the demand okay. either on the retail or msme medium enterprise or even large corporate okay so i i think that is important so in this quarter we have not seen any neg- negative impact rather i would be saying the first quarter used to be always very very weak quarter right um, but i think we are we are seeing a good demand we have seen a good demand in the first quarter the only thing would be we need to be very very cautious in the future in terms of how if there is any further increase in the rates which everybody is expecting uh, how it is going to impact the demand that we need to be watchful and we also need to be watchful in terms of how the rising interest rate scenario would impact the credit quality in terms credit of quality. Cap- credit quality in terms of capacity of the borrowers to repay you so i think as a bank we would be very cautious we would be very careful uh, in terms of growing our books and definitely we would not like to take any undue risk your net interest margin improved in the fourth quarter to 2.5% mainly due to reduction in cost of deposits how will the margin span out in a rising interest rate scenario i think in the short term there is always a upside for the bank whenever rate of interest goes up uh, but definitely for us the advantage is that today we are having a casa ratio of 31% yes. and there is a huge opportunity for us to improve it to 40% over a period of time so i think that is something which we are continuously working and i was sharing with you that we are opening more than 1 lakh saving bank account uh, every month Uh, i i think what we are expecting that in the current situation uh, we would be definitely able to exit the fi23 uh, with names of around 3% uh, have you decided what kind of route you want to take uh, in raising these funds 
So it is not thousand crores. I think what we have said that we would be raising capital, okay, to create a buffer, uh, which would increase our CET ratio from the current eleven point five to around thirteen and a half to fourteen. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, and that would require something around seven seven and a half thousand crores. I don't think. Okay. So so I think this is something. And today, if you see the market conditions, the market conditions are not very conducive for a capital raise. Correct. Today, today our CT ratio takes is absolutely adequate to take care of our growth requirement. Okay, so we are not desperate, uh, but definitely during the current financial year, uh, we would be looking to raise uh, capital uh, to the extent of a billion dollar kind of thing. Okay, which billion would be dollar kind of billion thing. dollar type of thing, and depending on the circumstances, the overall economic scenario. I think at the right time we would be raising. No, I think we we are exploring all the options. But at this point of time, I think it is important uh, to have the some partners who come with the equity who are good names. I think because that would also give a lot of comfort to the existing investor. Right. So 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 I think we would be looking to explore all these options where we don't have the capital only, but we have some good. Creditable names on the capital side, like the private equity players. Uh, they could be one. They could be the, the private equity, one. the sovereign funds. Thank you for speaking uh, to Business Standard. It was a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Kumar says the bank has seen healthy growth in deposits, loans, and recovery from stressed assets. Can bank sustain those profits? Last year was the best year for banking. But it may suffer losses on the treasury side. Our experts explain what MTM losses are. Mark to market or MTM refers to an accounting practice under which the value of an asset is derived from its market price and not the price at which the asset was purchased. Till the time the asset is sold. Movement in the price of the asset will therefore result in either a notional loss or a notional gain. Indian banks are large holders of government securities as the banking system has to maintain a statutory liquidity ratio or SLR. SLR, which is a percentage of deposits, is primarily maintained through investment in government bonds. The current requirement is 18% of net demand and time liabilities. Banks run an interest rate risk on these bond investments. When benchmark policy interest rates rise, bond yields also rise because of an increase in the cost of funds. Bond prices and yields move inversely, which means that when yields are heading higher, bank face MTM losses on their bond investments. Banks need to make provisions for these losses, and this threatens profitability. For example, a rise of one basis point in the yield of the 10-year benchmark government bond corresponds to a fall in the price of roughly seven paise. In the June quarter, the yield on the 10-year bond rose by 61 basis points to 7.45 percent. Banks do have protection from interest rate risk in the form of a bond portfolio called the Held to Maturity portfolio. Securities kept in this portfolio do not have to be marked to market. The RBI has been increasing the limit on HTM portfolios in order to provide banks with a cushion from MTM losses amid a very large supply of bonds by the government. The other two portfolios are the Available for Sale book or the AFS book, and the Held for Trading book or the HFT book. These two portfolios are marked to market and hence are at risk of losses in the current environment. Securities from the AFS book can be sold at any time, while those in the HFT book must be sold within 90 days. As of June 18, 2022, banks' investments in government securities stood at 49.5 trillion versus 45.8 trillion a year ago. The pace at which banks have bought government securities over the last two years has outstripped the mandatory requirement under SLR. This is because the ultra loose monetary policy maintained during the pandemic provided banks with the opportunity to make gains out of bond investments as yields fell. Now, with the rate cycle turning, banks faced large MTM losses 
on these bond holdings. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so high. I will Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. If there is a fall in treasury profits, can RBI intervene and help banks? Do banks require RBI's help in this regard? In its FSR, the central bank said that Indian banks were well capitalized. Our banking expert, Tamal Bandupadhyay, presents a historical context while highlighting that the banks have enough cushion to weather such treasury losses. Hi, Tamun. Thanks for coming on the show again. Thank you. Now, this week's bankers' trust was a bit too technical. Can you explain mm -hmm. why banks may face a loss in this quarter after they registered the highest net profits? Yeah, no, what I meant is this last year was a golden year for banking industry, the highest ever net profit by the, all the listed banks. Now, this quarter won't be the same because of the treasury loss. And the treasury loss is triggered by the sudden rise. The interest rate cycle has changed. It's going up. Now, our Reserve Bank of India has uh, hiked the rate by 90 basis point uh, in two phases during this quarter. Uh, bond yield has gone up. As you know, the bond yield and the bond prices move in opposite directions. So what happened is this is little technical. Yes, indeed. Under the norm, a bank needs to put in about 18 rupees of, uh, of their, you know, in the so-called NDTL, uh, which is roughly proxy for deposits in bonds. But in reality, it's about 25%, 25%, 25 rupees and all. And there are, there are three baskets in bonds. And one, the major basket is called HTM, held to maturity. If you keep the bonds there, then you don't need to mark to market. Now, what is mark to market? Mark to market simply put is this, the price at which you, you bought the bond, if the prices have fallen, then the gap needs to be provided for. So that hits your balance sheets. So this is exactly what has happened. So they are actually about 21% is HTM. Mm -hmm. um, so which means the rest of it, the rest 4% uh, it, for the industry, it depends from bank to bank, uh, is subject to M, M to M. And that is the mark to market loss. And that erodes your, your profitability and that can also eat into your capital. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the long and short of it. It was a sudden jerk and uh, banks, some of the banks I know uh, would be in, in difficulty in terms of, in terms of their uh, treasury operations. Question regarding this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. This seems more like a notional loss. So can RBI step in and help banks? Yeah, it is. But it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a globally accepted practice. You can't, you, can't, you can't avoid it. Indeed, RBI can step in. Uh, in the past, what RBI can do, RBI can increase your HTM portfolio. It says, look, now you are you can, you can have more HTM. So RBI need to tell them, look, I'm giving you an, another window. I'm raising the HTM uh, uh, limit. And you are, uh, through this window, you push more bonds into HTM category. So mm -hmm. that's one way of doing it. Other way of doing it is this, look, Yes, indeed, you are making losses, meaning because of the provision, but the provision, you stagger it over a period of time, over the next four to six quarter. In the past, in my column, I mentioned on many occasions, RBI has ha, had done it uh, to, to protect the bank's balance sheet and as well as to ensure, uh, ensure government borrowing because there's a huge government borrowing staring at us, four trillion plus, highest yeah. ever, highest ever. If you ask me, uh, my take is RBI probably may, may not do it because uh, if you look at the Reserve Bank of India latest FSR, which is the bank's health, health check report, which came on the 30th June, it says banks are well capitalized. Even in the worst case scenario, there uh, no banks would, 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 be, would, be, would be required any capital and go down below the regulatory limit, what the, what the regulatory regulation needs. Mm -hmm. And... On top of that, banks, uh, you know, credit offtake is uh, happening. Yeah. So you are earning more from credit. And also, your net interest margin is going up. So the bank's uh, uh, interest income, uh, 
to to some extent or to a large extent can compensate for the losses in treasury okay. so rbi may not be uh, <laughs> you know may not uh, extend a helping hand uh, which it which he had done on past many occasions but as rates are expected to rise won't this loss continue for coming quarters and not just be limited to this one it depends on bank treasury floor managers but definitely it would not be as as severe or as high as this as the june quarter because there is a sudden jerk and 90 basis point in one quarter so oh. as we expect the rates will indeed rise and the bond in, in sync with that uh, uh, the bond yield will rise and the prices will fall but that will be gradual you mm-hmm. know here the banks are uh, sort of caught unawares so they are much much better prepared and the pace of hike also will not be uh, will be smooth i would say and the bank of india governor has repeatedly been saying that uh, you know they will not they will there will not be disruption in the market he also spoke about na uh, ill curve is for public good i would i would like to believe is public good meaning it, it includes government it, it includes also the banking industry and you're talking about managing i'm taking you a bit off topic now uh, yeah. in interview with business standard the finance minister said that the privatization that privatization would soon take place yep. do you think it is viable to go for complete privatization right now or should the government rather dilute a majority stake first what's the best way around it's a very complicated question uh, you know and very complicated issue rather uh, if you remember finance minister had earlier said by fiscal 2022 we have already done idbi privatization yes. we would do two more banks privatization and one general insurance company would take it to the public yes and for so nothing has happened so far idbi privatization is a mockery of private it's a joke mm-hmm. you know in 2019 lic which was then fully owned by government picked up 51% stake yes. subsequently its stake has come down because of the expansion of equity but does it have the private character no it's still subject to cvc yeah you know it's it still needs to use the rajbhasha mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's it's not it's not a private bank it's not a private bank it's a, it's a, it's a joke i mean mm-hmm. now government saying that we will do that so privatization is very different from divestment yeah right now the key to privatization is government bringing down the government stake uh, below 51% in the bank nationalization act yes. i understand that it it would be it would be done but where would it stop ideally government should not hold at best more than 26% 26% gives you the power under companies act to block any resolution beyond that government should not have any power be on that so if government says okay i'll bring it down to 49% and this is privatization this is not privatization i mean in a sense who will take it and apart from that there are many clauses there are many things under the banking nationalization um, uh, you know act which 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 gives the government the absolute power to appoint the the ceo the non executive directors the the chairman so on and so forth and particularly one segment section 8 of bank nationalization act uh, bank national act tells the government have the absolute power to direct the banks to do something what is in public good in consultation with reserve bank of india but often it happens rbi has been bypassed and the finance ministry does it directly mm-hmm. so who will be interested in putting in money if these clauses are not removed so yeah. it's a very government we are all waiting for the draft um, amendment to the bank nationalization act and let's see what is there unless government promises to keep all this thing all its power at bay you know even the private banks you see the non promoters are not allowed to hold more than 26% stake yes so if uh, not all here you government must bring it down to at least 26% stake and secondly Uh, it has to cede the power or under various clauses which now, what are the other hurdles the government could face with its privatization plan no i i don't think there is any other thing there is unions are tame now i mean uh, that that the kind of uh, power the union used to hold they don't have anything and why why does the government want to privatize because government wants to wants to close the tap of recapitalization since 1994 it's i think four and a half trillion money has gone into to keep the banks alive 
Yes. The governments have the first stage is done the consolidation drive to bring the bank, make the banks bigger and stronger, larger in scale, etc. And the second stage is talks about privatization. To start with two, probably it will have more if it succeed. And then it would keep a few banks uh, which will serve the purpose for social good. I guess that's the way to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think any hurdle, hurdle there at all. Uh, there would be some protest by the trade unionists. Uh, they might go for a strike, so on and so forth, but they will not be able to stall it. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. We'll talk next week. Thank you. Thank you. While reacting to FM's interview in Business Standard, Tamal said that the, for the privatization drive to be successful, while reacting to FM's interview in Business Standard, Tamal said that for the privatization drive to be successful, the government would need to reduce its stake to 26% and make changes to the Bank Nationalization Act to witness some real difference on the ground. That's all for this week. We'll be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. with more news and analysis. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.